Okay, so uh, changing the belt is a common thing that we need to do. Um, when they, the doors get jammed, you just keep running and it fries the belts off. Or they're just, um, they just get slick and it make it spin. So these four nuts right here, you got to loosen. And that's, see the actual motor is mounted there. So you're loosening the motor mount. And then I got to take the brake off my hand on this one. So then you just basically grab it and you just take the belt off. It's going to be a little harder than that because the, this sprocket right here is going to be hooked to the door. So you'll have to, you know, it can be done. It's easy enough. Um, I'll show you in the next video. But anyway, another common problem is the clutch will get smooth and it'll just slip. And all you need to do is take this crown nut off right here. And um, it'll have a cotter pin through it. I already loosened it up. So you just take this off. And then you slide the washers and the spring off. And you slide the pulley off. And this is the clutch. And you can see this one's new. But they'll be really shiny, you know, on one that's, you know, used. And I mean, it's that easy. It's not hard to do. And how would you identify if it's the clutch that needs to be replaced? If it's the clutch, it, and if this spring and nut assembly is, is all the way tightened down, and this is spinning, but the motor's not, or the door's not going up, that's the clutch. Okay. So this is just spinning. See, this is a friction pad, is what a clutch is. So without any more friction, it, it, the pulley will just slide right here instead of grabbing it and turning it. Okay. So that's how you know. Um, so anyway, belt, pulley, or uh, belt and clutch. Um, and then, uh, this is it. This will be easier to show you uh, how to do this. So if for some reason the door is stuck, doesn't want to go up, it's up halfway, you know, or you just need to be able to move it by hand. This chain, uh, if you pull it down, what it's going to do, and you're going to have to get in here. So if you watch this, can you see that separate? Oh, down there, yeah, yeah. left-hand side, bottom. Right here. Yeah. So it's got two nut heads sticking out of it, see that? And they ride in the sprocket. Can you see that? So let me move it like that. So see that the head of that bolt, um, bolt right there? Come here, let me turn this around. So can you see that, the head of that? There's one there and one on the bottom. Can you see that? Yeah. So you pull this down and you, you lock it. There's a place to lock the chain down below. And then it makes it free spinning. So, so it stays open. Yeah, so okay. see if I move it out, I can see how easy it is for me to move. Oh yeah. And the door doesn't move. Yeah. So this, I can move the door up and down by hand with easily. If I engage it to the motor, which is what I'm doing here. Now, you know, you can see how much harder it is and the door's not even attached. So right. that's what you do for maintenance. So you'll pull this down and lock it and that gives you, and then you can just freely opening, close the door by hand. You do that, you can do all your work and then put it back together. Um, when they're old, you know, if it hasn't been any maintenance done on it in a long time, when you pull on this chain, nothing happens. So you need to get in there and spray it with lube and take a screwdriver and you're going to be facing it like this. So you're going to have to get in here like this and physically go like this and loosen up all the, you know, the dirt and everything and spray, spray and do this. And then it'll free up, you know, and move the chain. And then it'll start, you know, it'll start acting like it should, just like that. But most of them, you know, that's, they're going to be stuck like that. And you have to free them up. Um, every new unit that you clean... Um, an RV unit, you should make sure that that's working properly. Clean that, make sure it's working good, because you're the one 
maintenance is the people that need, really need that. So you're just helping yourself out. Um, so um, the last thing are these two nuts right here. And what they do, this this whole shaft slides. So when the, when the door's going down, see it says close? Mm -hmm. This whole thing moves, um, or the two nuts move, I'm sorry. So if you can see this plate right here, if, if I push this plate like this and, and call for it to move, this, it'll just spin, they won't move. They See the grooves in these nuts mm -hmm. right here? It actually, they ride on the bottom of this plate. Okay. See how the plate's a little dirty yeah, right now? Yeah. So they ride on that. And as this turns, these move. So these nuts will come over and both of these micro switches need to be activated. It's a double, um, it's just extra, they, they both need to be activated. Like right now, th these are both up from that nut and then it'll stop. And once it comes back over here on the open and these both go like this, it'll, cl it'll stop. If one of these switches goes bad, then you're gonna see that problem. Like on the open, if one of the, you know, it closes one, but the other one switch doesn't work, it'll keep trying to open and billow in the top. It'll just keep keep going. It's That's how you know that it's this switch. And on the bottom, it'll, if it just bounces off the ground, you'll know it's one of the closed switches that's out. Mm. So the, those are the basics. You know, you just wanna keep the chains lubed um, but there, it's not that difficult, you know, as long as you know, you know, this electrical stuff. And the power needs to be turned off before you operate. You go to the end of the building, shut the power off before you do any maintenance on them. No, there's, um, now we're going to go over to an actual live motor and I'll show you about how to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a cover on here. So anyway, when you come to any motor to do any work, you want to turn off the power. And there's one of these switches at every single motor. Now, this is what I was talking about. These units are at an angle, and you know some of these uh, on the other side. These are mounted on the other end, and you can get the pulley off to change the clutch. This you can't. So you're gonna you're gonna have to cut either take pull the motor all the way off or cut an access hole to get, to get it off. You know, so it's just bad design. Um, so here's everything. Um, hooked up, you know, you saw it as just this unit. Now I've got the chain on here hooked to the door um, So pulley clutches in there just like the other one um, Now Now here's the the open close nuts mm -hmm. and what we're gonna do well first of all you're gonna have a, a programming keypad like this. And so this is a customer's unit. You got your scissor lift in here or a ladder. And you wanna, you know, cause you're gonna be by yourself for the most part. So you can't be down there and up here, down there and up here. So this really helps out. So in order to program this into this, every unit has a transmitter on the wall right here, or this is a receiver. So if you can see right here, there's a little button next to this yellow LED light right where my finger is. So we're gonna, Wait. okay. Can you, it's oh, right I see it, okay. okay. So we're gonna push that and the LED light's gonna come on. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to power on. The LED light came on, mm -hmm. now I'm gonna put in a four digit code. And then hit enter. That, that code was already in there, but that's all you need to do. And now your program is too bad is going to work so you can open and close the door without getting off your ladder. So, and you need to do that. Now you can pan up to here. When you're adjusting these motors, you need, you need it because it's going to go up and down quite a few times. So we know the close is good, but what I want to do, I want to make it come open a little more. Right now it's only coming open to like right here. So I'm going to push in on the metal tab. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes me, then I'll be able to move it freely you know, on this shaft. Oh, wait, do you want to turn the power off? Um, you can. Okay. 
but on this, yeah, that's fine. Turn the power off. And then what you want to do, if you want it to go higher, you want to back, back the nut off, go backwards. So it takes longer to get to the shutoffs. Does that make sense? Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm backing it off. So it, it's going to take longer to hit this now. If I moved it forward, it'd be the opposite. Okay. You see? So, and then once you move the plate back, see how it locked in? Yeah. That, it's got to lock in like that or it's going to give you a lot of problems. So we're going to try it now. Oh, power. Two, five. Yeah, I backed it off, so it's going to take longer for it to shut those off. Okay, so it went up a little bit, but I'm going to I'm going to do it again so it comes up even higher, and I'll show you. So you have to close it to make this happen. So we're going to close it. How it how it pushes those two switches closed. When it comes in contact, mm -hmm. they both, you know, it shuts that. That's on the down. It's the same as the up, but if you had one that was, you know, this far off the ground and you wanted to make it go further, you'd back it off. So it takes longer, you know, for, this is going to go more revolutions before it, it closes those switches. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to make this go up a little higher. So I'm going to back it off again. So I'm going to push in, power off. So I'm going to push in and I'm going to back it off. Maybe two and then you always have to make sure it's locked into this or that'll move and it'll be a it's, it'll be a nightmare so power back on and then stop about here before just stop a little higher uh, a little so each one they're a little different it's weird but you just got to keep messing with it you don't want to go too much though without knowing what it does. So I know next time I need to go about six turns. So now I'm gonna lower it. This is about, this is the most complicated thing to do with these, is getting your ups and downs right. So I'm gonna power off and I'm gonna push down again and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go six. Those are actually half turns. So power back on. And let's see what we got. Let's see how it Yeah, it went up higher. So some of them, you only do it maybe two times and it goes that far. So you just want to start slow. <clears throat> Definitely not want to go crazy with it because, I mean, it can hit this and want to keep going because the switch is, you know what I mean? Right. So once it hits this stop and it's not calling for stop, this thing will go crazy. Okay. I mean, it'll start billowing over and it goes nuts. So that's fine. That's where I'm going to leave this. <clears throat> it's good. So down is the same thing. Now, if I wanted to come back down, I'd move the nut forward, you know, but you always want to move like on the down. I'm in the up position. This is when you want to adjust the down. Okay. When I'm in the down position, that's when you want to adjust the up. Okay. So if that makes sense. So we talked about the two switches. Um, if one of these does, doesn't work, it'll keep going. And so I had a customer, um, I, I think it was Alan. And his did that. It was billowing over, and you know I had never run into that issue before. And I found out what it was. I I just pulled these wires off on each one, and I put them together like it was you know closed, and it didn't do it anymore. So we have these switches. We've got these nuts. We have these relays. We have the transformer. We only have like one of those because you know they don't really go bad. Um, I've got these capacitors. I've got. Everything that you need. I got extra springs. I got um, the belts, the clutches. We have plenty of transformers. We have all kinds of stuff. And where do you order all that stuff from? Is it different places? Nope, it's all one place. It's um, Liftmaster, but it's uh, the father company. Um, 
uh, I forgot the name of it, but I we get it. Well, we used to be able to get it direct, remember? Yeah. And then they kind of gave us a little issue, but. Okay, but all the components can be bought in the same place. Yes. Okay. And you know the the previous. Uh, when I got here, they were using automotive belts, and they didn't have the the little riblets on the belt, uh -huh. and it was smooth, and that was a huge problem. And these are meant to have these ribbed uh, belts because these don't tighten up really tight. You know, even when you're tightening them, they don't tighten real tight. So they need that for grip. Okay. And um, so those are actual factory belts. Those belts. Um, it's just the right part for the job. I mean, it's common sense. Um, these, this uh, receiver here. Now, I've had keypads work just fine. You know, they light up. Usually, a keypad doesn't work. You know, you put a new battery, it won't light up the backlight. You know, the keypad's bad. Okay. When, but if it lights up and nothing's happening, you know, you're gonna have to jack the door. You want to come up here and, and check the transmitter, turn the light on, try and enter, you know, with the, if it doesn't shut off, you know, when you're, and after you've entered your code, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's, it's one of these. I've had a few of these go out, but okay. it's pretty rare, <clears throat> but that's about it really. Um, these chains get loose. Um, this one's not too bad, but they can get loose and cause issues and there's four bolts that hold on this motor. The motors weigh 60 pounds or so, so they're not that bad, especially with a scissor lift. You get the scissor lift right underneath, pull the bolts and just set it right here on the corner and then to the ground. Or, you know, I've even tied them off before. Um, I forgot how I did that. But there's ways to do it safely. Oh, I've tied it off to the, its own bracket before. Through here with a rope and around here, just so I didn't, you know, Anyway, these four bolts, and that's it. The motor comes off. Um, you want to shut the power off, of course, before you disconnect the AC power. This is 120 volts right here. Um, but they come off real easy. And yeah. then um, we have the chain replacements, and you just put a I've new got, one? I've got chain. Um, I haven't had one go bad yet. You know, to tighten it, you just loosen those and, and tr you know, drop, drop, see how it's got slack. You know, right here. So when you loosen these, it'll naturally oh, okay. want to fall and it'll, it'll get tight. Oh, okay. I um, see. But if you do need, you know, uh, a new chain, we've got chain. Um, you might have to, depending on what's, there's multiple size uh, sprockets out there. Don't ask me why, but this is a small one. There's big ones. So you might need to make your own, you know, and if you don't know how to do that, you can probably look it up on YouTube, but you grind one of these uh, little tits off on each side and then just pop it out with a, uh, a little chisel or um, I don't want to say. Um, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You pop that out and then the, it comes apart and then however long you want to take out of it a couple, you know, and just do the neck, you know, wherever you want to, that section to come out and do it again. Okay. We don't really, we don't have a grinder, but um, I use our cutoff wheel that we use to uh, cut the locks off. This is the master link right here. You can always tell because it's got this clip. There's only one in, in any chain. So here's this one. And you just take a pair of needle nose right to here and the other end there and just pinch it together and it pops it off. Okay. So that clip comes off and there's a little, that little plate comes off and then it, the rest of it comes out the back. Um, just like a bicycle chain when you're a kid. Okay. That's about it. But this is this, this is the main part right here, adjusting it. Okay. Um, 